Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. This is my old uh, early 90s Remington Police Special Sniper. It's in uh, 223. Has a 26 inch barrel, heavy barrel. And originally this rifle came with a hinged floor plate. And I can't remember if it held four rounds or five rounds, but um, I upgraded to this HS Precision bottom metal and it uses a detachable magazine. This is their 10 round version. And um, there was probably a couple of reasons other than capacity as to why I upgraded to this uh, this bottom metal. Now this Remington, uh, back in the early 90s, this stock was actually made by Precision, uh, HS Precision. So uh, Remington, that's, that's the stocks they were using on these police specials back then. And that's what they came with uh, original equipment. So this bottom metal was supposed to be a nice easy drop in and for the most part it was there was a couple of fitment issues and when I get back to the house in a more controlled environment where I don't have to worry about wind noise or whatever um, I'll get into more detail about um, replacing this why I ended up pulling the scope off and why we're back out here to re-zero my scope but uh, for now this first part of the video is just going to be me getting the uh, scope zeroed in yeah, we'll just do a, a couple of minutes on that and then like I said, when I get back to the house, I'll discuss in more detail about the uh, the bottom metal install and some of the minor little fitment issues I had with it. All right, well, let's do some shooting. Okay, so I'm using some uh, Winchester 55 grain 223, just white box bulk ammo. Um, for those of you that may not know, it's not a good idea to put 556 in a 223 chamber. However, it's generally accepted that it's okay to put 223 in a 556 chamber. Um, nothing's carved in stone. If you have any doubts about, you know, what you should be running, you might want to contact the manufacturer. But anyway, uh, we're running 223 into this, and let's get the zero going. All right, we're at 50 yards. I'm just want to figure out where I'm hitting and then we'll get out to 100. So three rounds. Well, for the center bullseye. Okay, a little low, that's to be expected at 50. Originally had this zeroed for 100. That sucks. This damn thing's already acting up. I was playing around with the, the 10 rounder at home and it's a little bit picky about how fast or slow you actuate the bolt. Um, once you get the, the cadence down, it's okay. The four rounder works flawlessly. I can go slow in between fast and it'll chamber, but I think I need to adjust the feed lips on this and uh, when we get back to the house I'll talk about that. Okay so that was like medium speed and it went fine. I just went too slow for this magazine. When I, was when I was at home, I was having most of the trouble with the last round. That seems to be the most picky. All right, well, went right in. All right, let's go see what we did. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust for about an inch over on windage. I think we're pretty close on elevation, so I'm gonna fire another three rounds after I make my windage adjustment, and then we'll get this thing out to 100 yards. Okay, I didn't record all of the shooting. Um, a lot of these are just me making scope adjustments, but these are my last three shots at um, 100 yards. So I came in about 
maybe half, five eighths, something like that. So um, I don't think that's too bad at 100 yards with a uh, crap box Winchester. Um, I, I was having some off and on feeding issues with this magazine. And it seems to be really sensitive to uh, bolt speed. So um, like I said, when we get back to the house, I'm going to do some measurements and I'll show you what I think is going on with this magazine and what I'm going to adjust to get it to work better. But if you actuated the bolt just right, um, it, it worked pretty good. It's just if you went a little bit too slow or a little bit too fast, especially on the last round, you know, that's when it seemed to be uh, acting up the most. And then uh, I did have some ammunition problems today. This is the first time this has happened in a long time. But you can see the, that the primer did get hit and it doesn't really look like a light strike. Uh, I tried this probably four or five times and it just wouldn't go off. So it was just, just a bad round. So, um, yeah. Okay. So we'll get back to the house and we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, the upgrade and, uh, maybe some history on the rifle. Okay. We are back at headquarters and, um, going to finish this video few things I wanted to talk about um, it's gonna take a little bit of explanation so we're kind of trying to eat an elephant here uh, eating an elephant can be done just one bite at a time all right so this four round magazine in my new bottom metal by HS precision works perfect um, slow bolt action medium speed high speed first round last round whatever it, this Four round mag works great and as we were seeing out there when I was shooting this morning this this magazine's a little bit temperamental and um, HS precision gives you some uh, some measurements here to check on the the magazine and they say that it's basically a starting point but this magazine as I'm going to demonstrate comes in pretty close to these numbers and this one doesn't so I think we need to make some adjustments to the feed lips on this mag and then it'll become much more reliable. So they actually sell a tool that you can do this with, which I may end up buying. I would hate to go at this with a pair of pliers or needle nose and jack it all up. So I think I'm probably going to go ahead and buy their tool to make the, the feed lip adjustment. Uh, down here they tell you uh, how to adjust the feed lamps. This one... This picture here is for 220 Swift only, and then all other magazines here. So they're showing you where to measure for your front and rear gaps. So let's do a couple of measurements, and we'll see why I think this one works, and this one doesn't work very well. Okay, so their instructions for the magazine say a good starting point is 0.312 for the rear gap of the magazine feed lips. And you can see by this, this caliper, um, the rear measurement is right on the money. Okay, so the front gap, they want 0.325. And you can see that that one is comes in at 6, point, point two five, or uh, 326. Three Pretty close, a thousandth off. Depending on how you measure it, it, it goes back to five. So the feed lips, according to their instructions on this four rounder, are adjusted exactly where they, they tell you to start. And like I said, this magazine, it works great. I, there's no issues with it. Um, this one, not so much. So um, we'll do the, the rear measurement. And like I said, the rear is supposed to be 312. And that comes in at, let me get back here where they want it, want it measured. So that comes in at 310, just a couple thou tight. Okay. But up here, it's quite a bit tight. It's 10 thousands too tight. So I think this is what's causing the issue, especially on the last round. And the reason I say that is, um, 
as the rifle strips the round you can see how that one got kind of jammed up boogered up on the brass but anyway because this is tight especially on the front um, it's not allowing the round to tilt up as much as it it, it needs to to get into the chamber and I was watching this mag and comparing it to the four rounder and um, you could definitely see a difference in the the angle of approach going into the barrel it was coming in more straight and it was hitting the very bottom of the feed ramp of, of the barrel so I think if I'm right we just need to open that front up a little bit and maybe open up the rear a couple of thou too but the front is definitely way too tight and I'm, I'm just convinced that's what's causing the problem with this 10 rounder so okay we're done talking about the mag and why I think it's not quite working as well as it should okay so this is what originally came with the rifle uh, this hinged uh, floor plate and uh, it it worked okay there's nothing wrong with it um, until we ran into an issue with the Remington class action settlement and Remington had a problem with their triggers the original design trigger um, when the bolt was cycled and you had a round chambered uh, if you put it to safety there was the possibility that the rifle would fire without touching the trigger and then vice versa if it was on safety and you slid it to the fire position uh, there was a chance the rifle would would go off without touching the trigger there were quite a few people that, that were injured there were a few people that died and um, Remington fought it for a long time saying that the original design trigger that they kept trying to claim that it was operator error and people weren't doing things right well the engineer that actually designed this trigger um, did a piece for either 20 20 or 60 minutes and him being one of the original engineers on the design of the original trigger said that yes this can happen under certain circumstances uh, the right amount of dirt um, a spring failure uh, he, he went down a whole list of things with the original design trigger that, that could cause this problem and um, originally he was under a gag order from Remington um, he had a, a non-disclosure agreement he wasn't supposed to talk about it but I think he ended up having some health issues and he figured he wasn't going to be around too much longer anyway so he decided to just talk about everything that he knew about his trigger and and what the issue was and like I said I was either 20 20 or 60 minutes if, if you're interested you can go on YouTube and probably Google it and you'll you'll find the uh, the documentary so anyway once that happened um, Remington kind of realized that they were gonna lose the lawsuits they were gonna lose the class action anyway um, they still had to pay out for the people that got in injured but they decided to settle the claim and replace the triggers and that's when we started having some issues with the original um, hinge plate bottom metal trigger housing whatever you want to call this thing so now we're going to talk about what happened when I took this rifle in and had the replacement trigger for the class action okay so after I took the rifle in to one of Remington's authorized repair centers for the class action trigger replacement they put the new Remington trigger in and the first problem I had was this bolt release when you push that button in it lowers a little detent up here and allows you to pull your bolt out if, if you're familiar with uh, Remington's or Remington style type actions so what happened was after they replaced the the trigger assembly uh, the replacement trigger was wider and so what happened was the the edge of that release would rub up against the uh, the trigger housing and it would get stuck into the release position so when you push that and it gets stuck pushed up um, your bolt your bolt is no longer locked so if I release the bolt it's, it locks until I push that button up and as soon as I find it okay so when I push that button up I just showed you that allows your bolt to come out 
But what was happening was the replacement trigger, like I was saying, the, the housing was wider and causing that release to um, rub up against the trigger housing to where it would stay in a release position. And when you pulled the bolt, I mean, I almost hit myself in the face the first time it happened. So that was one reason that I wanted to change out the bottom metal. Well, on the original, what I did to solve that problem is, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but what I did was I took a file and I notched the housing so that that bolt release wouldn't get stuck. And let's see if we can get a better angle. Yeah, well, I think you can see what I did. So that solved that issue. And um, so I ended up going to a, a jewel trigger because I couldn't stand the replacement trigger. It was It's called a Pro X Mark or Mark X Pro or Pro X or something like that. I don't remember what the replacement trigger was called, but I, I didn't like it. It was, it was horrendous. So I decided to go with a jewel trigger. And I decided, well, as long as I'm doing all that, I'm gonna replace the bottom metal and let's get rid of that, that release problem, hopefully. So the Harris, the HS Precision, not Harris, HS Precision is much better. And I don't know if I'm getting this at the right angle. It just barely, barely rubs against this. Now, when I first dropped the barrel, first dropped the barrel into the stock and put the bottom metal in, and I snugged the screws up, what was happening was when I initially just kind of snugged the screws up, the two screws here, um, you could see the tighter I got or the closer I got to the 65 inch pounds that you're supposed to tighten those to, the barrel was slightly rotating in the stock as I tightened it. And then that uh, bolt release button was starting to rotate with the trigger housing, which is attached to the, the barrel. And it, it just, on this HS Precision, it just kind of barely clears it. It's, it's not getting stuck, but it's, it's still kind of closer than I would like. But anyway, it works, so we're not gonna worry about it. Okay, so I guess the last couple things we'll talk about here before I end this video is, um, I did have two minor fitment issues putting this uh, HS Precision bottom metal in for the detachable magazine. And that is that the thickness dimension of this original was about 60 thousandths thicker, maybe slightly more. And what happened was this is a precision fit screw. And what it did was it allowed this screw because this wasn't as thick. It allowed this screw to protrude. Up inside the. Uh, where the bolt lugs go. And I don't know if it's picking it up. But I don't know if you can actually see the screw head in there. But. What happened was the screw head came up into the the barrel lug area and um, what it did was the, the screw hit the bottom of the bolt and I didn't realize at first what was going on so when I first did it I couldn't get the bolt all the way it wouldn't go into a full battery and it would it would stop and it was I could tell it was hitting something so uh didn't take me too long to figure out what that was. So all I had to do was take off about a thread, maybe two threads off of that front uh, lug screw, and that solved that problem. Okay, the second problem I had was with the aluminum bedding and the, uh, the stock itself. Um, back here where this mag release rocks, let me see if uh, I think you can see that. Um, there wasn't enough room for this to retract fully and um, allow the magazine to drop out. So I got the magazine in there and then I couldn't get the magazine out. <laughs> so I had to take the screws out again, drop the whole thing out and figure out what was going on. And that was a very easy, easy, uh, easy fix right behind the, the pivot point here. Um, let me see if I can get a better angle. So right behind the, the pivot point here, is where I had to relieve some of the aluminum uh, bedding. And like I said, I didn't have to relieve very much. It, it took very little so I could get full travel on the, uh, the box magazine release. So that was another easy fix. So between that adjustment and knocking a thread and a half, two threads off of this front lug, um, everything else 
uh, turned out to be pretty much uh, dropped in. So um, really all I got left to do to make this rifle completely reliable with this 10 round magazine is I just got to do some feed, feed lip adjustments and this rifle will be a uh, 100%. Um, anyway, that's about it. Beat North Las Vegas. Oh, one last thing. This is the stuff I was shooting today. 223. Um, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, this is a 26 inch barrel. So if Winchester's claiming 3240, uh, I might have been getting that. All right, Pete North Las Vegas, over and out.